be played. Holy and loving God, once more we want to say thank you for the very breath of life you have given each one of us again this morning, allowing us to rise once more from our slumber and gather in this holy place seeking to know your will in our lives a little bit more this day. So open our hearts, speak to us, dear Lord, for we are listening. Amen. Amen. Every now and then I get a compliment that says, your words really inspired me this morning. Or, your words really hit home with me this morning. How did you know what I was thinking? And I always try to humbly accept those compliments in the spirit in which I think they are given. But I do need to tell you that I really cannot accept the compliment for the words that are spoken For while the voice is mine, the words, I pray, are from the Holy Spirit. And I say that with absolute honesty. For I pray every single day that the words that are spoken through my mouth are the words God would have us hear. Now, I know that I can speak a message. I've learned how to. I try to speak clearly with enough volume that everyone can hear and with deliberate enunciation. But beyond those tricks of the trade, which anyone can learn, I try very hard to take a back seat to the message being delivered each week. And I just wanted to make that clear before I begin speaking today. Because it seems that the message last week really did hit home with a lot of people. If you remember, that message was actually pretty simple, yet very powerful. It was about wrestling with God. And even for me, that was a very powerful message because I too needed to hear about that. And I think one of the reasons so many of us needed to hear that message is that we so often think that we cannot wrestle with God. It's not allowed. That we cannot go through times of questioning and wondering in our lives and that we cannot fail both ourselves and others because that would somehow be a squandering of our blessings. So last week, we were given permission to wrestle with ourselves, to wrestle with God and and faith and everything we're told to believe and actually to admit out loud, perhaps even to another human being, that we feel that way too. And that we are not bad people for doing so. It simply makes us more human. And humans rely upon God, not ourselves. When we ended last week, if you remember the story of Jacob wrestling with God, when we ended, Jacob had finished wrestling with God and his own past in a certain way, and when he was done, he received a new blessing from God. And as we were reading it, we were asked to think, well, how does that affect us? You know, what about you and me from this story? And I think we receive the same message. The message from the Holy Spirit that 
You know, we don't actually need to wrestle with God for his blessing. Nor do we need to fight for God's love. That the only thing we really need to do in life is believe in all of that. Well, that was a very nice message and a powerful message. And I hope I spoke clearly enough. Well, this week, as I prayed once more and listened for God's word, hopefully in my own head, I kept being drawn back to the beginning of last week's story, even though it wasn't our scripture for this week, because I kept wondering, why was Jacob all alone? when this happened. You know, the scripture says that he was traveling with a large host of other people. In fact, he had two wives, two other female companions, 11 sons, no wonder, plus servants and all his possessions. I mean, he wasn't alone at all in this story. Except when he met God. And I think that should be the starting point for this week's message. That so often, although we may be surrounded by a host of other people and things, it is just as often that, we, that when we go and meet God, we need to do so when we are alone. That we almost have to leave all other things aside so that we may enter into God's presence fully aware and without distraction. For then can we truly interact with God unencumbered by what other people might think of us, without all the noises from the outside world ringing around in our heads, and simply be present to what God might want to say to us, to do with us, and to lead us. And it is when we come out of those times that we have a little bit better understanding of where we are in life and why we are in life. And so just as Jacob got a new name and a new identity, we are renewed after these times. And we're reminded once more that each of us is God's holy child, made in the image of God, and called good by God. And then we are asked to step out, to step out into the world once more to help others know that they too are good, and to help them heal from the wounds that this world can inflict so easily upon us, so unlovingly. And how do we do that? Well, a good place to start is that first sermon Jesus spoke. The one where he said, Blessed are the humble in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who are gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. That first sermon Jesus ever gave was and it and still is our blueprint for life. A blueprint that summarizes all other things. 
just as when he said that all commandments can be summed up to love your Lord, to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, now he's telling us how. To be kind and merciful and gentle with others. To be fair with our dealing with others. For that is the will of God. We have started a time of discernment here at St. Jude's. This program that we are calling New Possibilities for St. Jude's. And this is not a program that only a very small group of people came up with, or one that I would like for us to do to satisfy some need of mine, or even based upon some book about church growth that we randomly selected off Amazon one day. This is something that has been taking shape for a very long time here. Ever since we first uttered those words, something's coming a few years ago. Well, I think it finally came. And it has come in the form of listening before acting. We do a lot. You know, we can make ourselves very busy, even here at church. We collect canned goods. We give out food. We have a choir. We pray for people. We send cards out. And a whole list of other things that aren't coming to mind. Right? We're very busy. We're one of the only churches around here that's actually open seven days a week because so many people are doing things. But we know we can do more. And the question has always been, well, what can we do more? And then, how do we do more? And I think both the what and the how is to take time to deliberately listen to God. We must invite God into this process or it will simply become another futile attempt to focus on a few new programs, numbers of people, and not actual souls and how we are healing the souls of those we encounter. So now is the time to look at those little cards everyone got. Do you still have yours? Because on these cards are two things. On one side, that might look like the back, on one side there is a prayer. And at the bottom of that card it says, Prayer time, 12 noon daily. Which simply means that every day at 12 noon we are all being asked to say this prayer wherever you are, so that at the same time every day, God is receiving our collective prayer to be filled with self-knowledge, to gain an understanding of who we are in life, and to be shown an awareness of God's presence in our lives. We are also going to say this prayer every Sunday, right after the offering. And that thing that was like the prayer for the people, it's called prayer for the journey now, in hopes that this prayer actually does become a part of us. Almost like reciting a creed. For this prayer has been given to us to unite us as one body, the body of Christ. On the other side of the card are three questions for us to think about during this time of listening. Three things to help us think about 
how do we live out the Beatitudes in our lives? All of the, these statements about blessedness, of using our blessings as God would have us use them. That's all we're being asked to do. Something very simple that fits on a little business card, yet something very powerful for all things done in God's name are powerful. I found an old song this week that speaks about being human in this life, of learning to depend upon God for all things and trying to still ourselves enough so that we actually open up a channel that God may speak to us through. I don't remember the melody. Will you help me? Because against my better instincts, I'm going to sing a couple verses. <laughs> and wouldn't you know, I listened to this all weekend, and I have no idea how it starts. Because we're going to learn this together one day. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Humbly I ask thee, teach me your will. While you are working, help me be still. Though Satan is busy, God is real. Order my steps in your word. We are so fortunate to have a faith that teaches us that it is not only okay to be human with all of our human frailties, but that we have also been created by God to do wonderful things. So much so that we will become the ones spoken about long ago in Holy Scripture, where it says, Let Israel say, God's love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, God's love endures forever. Let those who rely upon the Lord say, God's love endures forever. And let those of us who listen to the Lord say, God's love endures forever. My friends, we are the blessed ones of God who come in the name of the Lord. So let us give thanks for his love endures forever. Amen. 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 Will you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Holy God, we pray that we may live so that others may see the working out of your will through our lives. We pray that our lives may be an actual demonstration of your grace in this world. Help us to focus not on our own needs and desires, but to allow mercy, humility, and gentleness to be our guide. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, let us take just a moment of silence and allow all of these words to work within our hearts.